Hi guys, it's time for another Grain to Glass video. I have uh, sent out some beer mail, so um, I really need to put out some uh, Grain to Glass videos, which I haven't gotten around to. Um, I don't want you guys to feel that I'm spamming you with other videos, but I have to put out some videos as fast as I can. Hope uh, that you all will be fine with that. And the one we're doing today is one of the beers from that candy beer competition I entered. I will put a link to uh, the competition videos uh, down below. And I also got the request to start texting my recipes. Don't want to text all the videos, but I can surely put the recipe in the description box or put a link to uh, the recipe. I hope uh, that will be fine. Um, I read about this competition and the competition was to brew a beer with candy in it. Besides that the beer should be to style and the style are the Swedish Home Brewing Association styles because I don't eat candy anymore because I'm an adult at least on paper. Uh, I decided to go with some old flavors and one of them is called Sue. We got them in little boxes when I was a child and they're still sold that way amongst others. The Sue candy looks like this. Then I heard that there was another variety of Sue. It's a Sue candy but it's a hard candy. They look like this. So I decided to use the Sue and Sue candies were shaped the original the one in the boxes are shaped like little monkeys uh, the swedish word for a monkey is apa a p a um, so i decided that i would brew an american pale ale of course with sue candy adding a lot of candy seemed like a bad idea but i thought that using the hard candy would be more like adding sugars than all of this extra stuff that is in candy. Uh, so I decided that I would do uh, the hard stuff in the boil and then I could uh, dry hop with the original candy. Uh, my plan was to do a recipe that would balance things out but uh, trying to highlight the candy but not go overboard. I still wanted a nice beer. Um, so I wanted a touch from the candy, but still a drinkable, nice beer. Uh, we can have a look at the recipe. I thought that the candy would thin the beer out, so I would try to balance that with the malt bill. So I used the Munich malt for uh, the base malt, and I used some wheat malt, Melodium malt, then I used three types of crystal and the idea with that was that none of them should overpower the candy. Uh, I did want some crystal in there to further uh, enhance the candy-like taste. And I used some Carafa 3 for uh, color as I thought this one could ferment down quite low. I um, added uh, some maltodextrin to it. In my measurement I didn't use that much hops but I chose to uh, use a couple of different hops instead to uh, once again so none of them would be dominating. I used uh, Chinook for bittering and then I used uh, Chinook, Citra and Centennial and Simcoe at 10 minutes and at uh, Whirlpool and they were 10 grams each and after fermentation I dry hopped with 100 grams of candy and uh, also some of the hops used in the boil and this was fermented with a, a blend of uh, USO5 and WLP001 the OG was 1055 and the FG went all the way down to 1011 I actually didn't intend it to go that far down, but it did. So, um, it's, this ended up with a ABV around 5.8, something like that, 5.75 to be more exact. I mashed this 
at 68 for 90 minutes and then did a mash out for 10 minutes. That was the recipe. I just skimmed through the recipe this time. I'm gonna put the recipe down below. So let's have a look at the brew day and then we will come back and uh, look at the beer and talk about the result. It's 2.6 kilos of Munich, 400 grams of wheat, 300 grams of uh, Melodion, 200 grams of uh, Caravienne, 200 grams of Crystal 150 and 100 grams of Crystal 240. Okay, let's get this crushed. Mash this at 68. 500 watts will do fine. Lower the pH just a bit before adding the grains. Fix the fittings to the pump and for this one I also got a new fancy strap so it's more secure. Okay, I'm gonna sparge now, so let's add the dark grains. Let's pull our grains. Okay, let's cool this sample down. And this is 3 grams of uh, calcium sulfate going in. Start of the boil. This is 15 grams of wonderful smelling Chinook. Let's take a pre-boil. And this is course before adding uh, candy and the maltodextrin 1036 pre-boil okay it's time to uh, start thinking about the candy We're using seven packs of this 80 grams of Sioux candy to the candy I'm gonna add some wort without spilling or burning myself. Okay, that should be more than enough. Whoop. Told you so. Mm. <laughs> it smells nice already. So let's turn on the light and put the burner on.
Okay, this will need a lot of stirring. This is a really sticky mess trying to dissolve this candy. But it will dissolve. Brew is a mix between USO5 and WLP001. For some reason, I'm gonna decant the old beer from here. And then we'll let this come up to room temperature. It's starting to dissolve now. We're at 20 minutes. Gonna add the malt dextrin now. Oh, it's sticky. For 10 minutes left of the boil, in goes 10 grams of citra, 10 grams of centennial, 10 grams of Simcoe, and 10 grams of Chinook. The candy is dissolved to a syrup. We're at about 4 minutes. i lower the effect to 1800 watts. Not to scorch anything okay we're at flame out in goes the last hop addition and that's the same uh, 10 grams of centennial 10 grams of chinook 10 grams of uh, citra and 10 grams of simcoe and let's give this five minutes so we'll be stirring this one for five minutes and then we will start the chilling okay let's take the OG 1054 okay nice Okay. Okay, we're finally in the fridge. Uh, we're about 24 liters of wort, uh, which is about a liter more than expected. Uh, we ended up just one point below expected. Was aiming for 10.55, and we ended up at 10.54. So that's a good thing. Uh, if I had boiled this down to uh, 23 liters, then we had ended over the roof for the Swedish guidelines for um, an American Pele, which is an OG of 1056. And sorry. I'm going to start this at uh, 18C, which I usually do with... Uh, 001 and USO5, it works for me.
and we are sitting uh, just below 20 degrees so it's gonna take off good I think okay next morning we're sitting at 18 C uh, and fermentation is away you can see Krausen ring has formed it's day three we're still sitting at 18 degrees uh, it's dry hopping time I will give this gentle dry hop uh, this is only 40 grams, uh, 10 grams of Centennial, 10 grams of Citra, 10 grams of Simcoe and 10 grams of uh, hmm, uh, Chinook, of course. And we will dry hop it with uh, 5 of this little Sioux candy. This is uh, the original. Uh, little monkeys now this is a little bit risky I know that but uh, I don't think this theme is about playing it safe so I'm gonna show you one if I can open this with one hand that is so this is uh, 100 grams of uh, little monkeys we will not use that one but rest of them will go straight in hope we'll be fine so little monkey candy 100 grams of them and 40 grams of uh, pellet hops uh, I don't want to go overboard with the hops on this one because uh, it's about the candy, but it's still uh, supposed to be a uh, pale ale, so we have to use some hops. But it's just 40 grams, which is uh, a very minimal dry hop in my measurement. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the beer. We still have some Krausen, which is good. So let's add the hops. The candy. I'm gonna show you one, then I will do the rest of camera. So I can open the boxes with two hands. Okay. Oi. I lost one. Okay. So that's uh, 100 grams of uh, little monkeys for dry hopping and 40 grams of hops. The candy and the hops are in um, and I've flushed the headspace with CO2 and as you see we have some action there that's uh, the, the gassing of the beer that starts the activity and that's a good thing because that will also help flushing out the oxygen added uh, I'm gonna raise the temp now I'm gonna let it self raise so I won't be applying any heat to it but I'm gonna give this as a slow Start with one degree, so we can raise this slowly. I know it's blinking heat there, but we don't have the heat pad added, so it will slowly rise up to 19. Then we can adjust it again. Don't want it to go too fast. Okay, I'm kegging the Sioux candy beer. Right now, I flushed uh, the keg with the uh, CO2. You can see it still see the smoke in there. Okay, gonna give this my full attention. The little candy monkeys did not uh, dissolve, 
instead they turned into giant gorillas uh, they're very soft and gooey let's try and eat one for uh, science Okay, they lost. Uh, um, they weren't that nice actually, uh, but they lost all their taste. Uh, taste of yeast and grassy hops. Okay, let's dump this. I actually have uh, harvested uh, yeast from this. I hope I didn't pick any candies up. I've uh, bottled the rest I had in uh, some of these pet bottles to send out. So let's crank this one open, see if we have any carbonation. Yes, we have a hiss. Let's give it a pour. Label out. Sorry, no label on mine. Uh, Let's give it a pour, the Sov Apa. Oops, spilled some. And uh, this is bottled from the keg, so uh, there's nothing to think about there. Let's have a look at the beer. It's, uh, it's quite dark beer um, I shouldn't have added that extra Carafa 3 uh, it's it's a good looking beer but I uh, think uh, it's a little bit too dark to be an American Pale Ale otherwise no complaints about the looks just uh, I don't think it fit the style really uh, there's nice level of carbonation in there we have an off-white head and a reddish dark color to the beer. Uh, the foam are sticking on nicely as you see. We have some larger bubbles as well. So let's give it a nose. There's a sweetness. You get the hops and the malt. Do I think we get the soup candy? Maybe some candy notes there. Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, let's be honest, this is not the best American painting I've done. But I think it's an okay beer. Uh, I think it's a little bit too bitter actually. Um, it did ferment out a little bit more than I was hoping for. So uh, that put it a little bit off. So um, I think it's a little bit too dark and uh, a little bit uh, too bitter. Besides that, I think uh, it turned out quite okay uh, for doing such a stupid thing like uh, putting so much candy in a beer. And wait till you see uh, that other beer I made, the Hefeweizen beer. Um, that was even more stupid than this one. It's quite refreshing. Um, I think I could have added a lot more maltodextrin in this one. As I said in an earlier video, I haven't experimented so much with that. That's a more Adam's thing, but I will certainly try it when I think it fits. And I really 
thought it would uh, give this beer some more body and uh, it might have done that um, but maybe I should uh, have added a whole kilo instead of a half I, I realized now that I um, might be complaining a whole lot about this beer as I said for doing such a stupid thing like yeah, adding uh, over 500 grams of candy in the boil then dry hop with another 100 grams of candy I think this one turned out quite nice and uh, it's a drinkable refreshing beer so but uh, if I really were to do this again I might be <laughs> I would uh, actually not have uh, added the candy in the boil instead I would have added the hard candy in uh, the fermenter I think because the candy flavor because I think I lost a lot of candy flavor so and uh, I would uh, bitter less and uh, I wouldn't use the Carafa 3 and uh, I would use more maltodextrin that I think would make this beer better but <clears throat> okay so there you had it uh, I'm so sorry if it sounded like I was complaining a lot but uh, this is uh, this was a fun experiment um, and uh, I've sent some out so uh, we will have to see what uh, the other guys are saying about the beer I also sent them uh, the soup candy both varieties both uh, the hard candy which went into the boil and uh, the soft candy that went into the dry hop you will find uh, the recipe down below and even links to the competition video where I talk uh, about the competition so cheers guys thanks for watching Dr. Hans out